Here is example 12 in our integration topic. Uh, it's looking pretty good here. The integral of cos x multiplied by e to the power sine x with respect to x from 0 to pi over 2. Um, two things that we're going to have to do here. First of all, identify the fact that we can use integration by substitution. Why? Uh, we have a product of terms in x. We have a composite function, e to the power sine x. Um, the other term multiplying by that cos x is a, a derivative of the inside function here. So we can use integration by parts, integration by substitution, sorry, part one. Uh, the other thing we're going to have to do is change our limits because these limits, 0 and negative pi over 2, are with respect to x and we're going to have to make them respect to a new variable which we're going to call u. So let u equal uh, the inside function of this composite thing which is uh, sine x. We can go ahead and differentiate that to get uh, du by dx is cos x. We can multiply by dx on both sides and we get du equals cos x dx. If you've been doing these with me you'll know that we're going to try to substitute using this to everything else apart from the composite function cos x dx and as you can see here we've already got uh, cos x dx is the same as du. That's going to help us. So when we actually write down our new uh, integral, cos x dx is the same as du. And then we've got e to the power sine x is just e to the power u. So that's basically it. What we've got missing so far are our limits. So we want to work out the new limits. Always good to let people know what you're doing. New limits, well, what's our relationship? U is equal to sine x. We know that we've got two values of x in these limits. The first one is 0. So when x is 0, u is equal to the sine of 0. The sine of 0 is 0. So we've still got uh, 0 as our lower limit. Uh, when x is pi over 2, our value of u becomes the sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So our new limits, our lower limit is 0, and our upper limit is now 1. We can go ahead and do the integration, easiest integration in the world, because the integral of e to the power of u with respect to u is still e to the power of u. Plus c, if we had an indefinite integral, but we've got a definite integral, uh, our limits are 0 and 1, which means we can substitute in at 1 first of all and then substitute in 0 and we end up with uh, e to the power 1 is e, e to the power 0 is 1 and it can be good to just actually remember after all that what it was that I, that's actually the value of. So the integral of cos x times e to the sine x with respect to x between 0 and pi over 2 is the exact value of e minus 1. There we go, that wasn't too bad. It certainly looked worse than it actually was. Check out example 13 and then we're building up to example 14 which is an absolute cracker. So I'll see you there.